Okay, now we're gonna just start with a very light treatment of mechanics, okay? It's, I, it's not even called kinematic art, mechanics, it's actually called kinematics where we're dealing with motion in a straight line, okay? And there's a lot of host of problems that you can find when we're dealing with motion of a single particle in a straight line. And one of them is when we have constant acceleration, possibly perhaps the easiest one of them all, okay? So basically, you've got a point moving in a straight line, what can be a car, can be a person walking, but it's just basically in constant acceleration okay so if you look at the graph of this particle okay it would be something like this okay this is the time and this is the v so this is the velocity time graph of the particle and it goes in a straight line like that okay now why is it a straight line it's because the acceleration if you know is dv dt okay and the acceleration is constant okay so actually you just have to write a so a is the acceleration and a is constant so if a is constant meaning the gradient of the graph is constant and it's gonna increase as a straight line as like so over here now why can the graph start when start i mean not when it's v equals zero well basically because v represents the final velocity so the particle can be moved be moving at an initial velocity before time starts so basically at time not time zero the the part, point of the particle is already moving at an initial velocity which we mark out as velocity u over here Okay, and from this simple graph, we can really draw out all sorts of equations from it, and we will use these equations to solve the problems. What are the problems again? A particle moving in a straight line with constant acceleration, constant acceleration like so, like this. Okay, this one, as you can see here, is the gradient, okay, which is equals to a constant acceleration. Okay, so this is what we have over here, and let's just draw out some, some equations from it. Now, V, okay, is basically okay v is like a concern with a value over here for example okay let's just say v is over here okay and this is where it's time t so v is equals to u okay add up with a t okay i hope that's easy enough to understand because when t is zero we got the initial velocity u and as at at point at time t we'll just add up the acceleration and um, the point change in time over here to get the velocity change in velocity over here you add up with this will give us the final velocity okay i hope it's easy to see like so again this one times the gradient will get this distance here so u plus this will get the final velocity like so okay simple manipulation of our graphs okay now the next thing we want to find is the displacement okay now as you know the displacement we can draw out the displacement for the velocity time graph that will just simply be the area under the graph okay so what does that mean it means that we we can the displacement is represented as this area over here okay bearing in mind that it's the whole area not not the area of the top triangle but it's the whole area under the graph why is that so we well, are basically because if you start at time zero and i'm already moving at a certain initial velocity okay i will cover much more displacement you see i'll cover much more displacement and that is represented by this displacement over here okay so using standard methods of calculus okay the displacement is equals to integrate from time equals to zero to a certain time t okay of the the function v the velocity function with respect to time okay but we also know that v is equals to this over here so we can just write it out as integrate zero to t a certain time t u plus a t with respect to time okay and then that will give us u t plus half a t squared using simple methods of integration u v, uh, displacement equals to u t plus half a t squared okay so let's just rewrite it over here our second equation of motion under constant acceleration okay so what is next well basically these two equations base um, can be used to solve any sort of problem dealing with this sort of motion okay under constant acceleration but what mathematicians did or what physicists did is that we are able to really draw out more useful versions of these two equations by eliminating certain variables and that shouldn't be too difficult to do because of this convenient v equals to u plus a t equation over there okay so let's just eliminate a okay we eliminate a first to see what we get so a is equals to v take away u divided by t okay basically just using this over here and then we can substitute this one in the equation that we have over there so x is equals to ut plus half okay that put v take away u divided by t because a is over here and then t squared okay then t squared i can cancel this out and i can cancel this out like that 
okay then later I'll just have x is equals to half okay got a ut here but I will minus a half ut so that will give me a uh, minus half ut uh, plus u okay yeah one minus half is half so half times the u is inside is half and t over here like so there we go our third equation okay things are moving quite nicely along so our third equation which is x is equals to half the final velocity plus the initial velocity times the time a good way to remember or how I like to do it is that you just imagine that if you're moving under constant acceleration you're just taking the average of the velocity okay and then add the two of them up times by time and then times by divide by two times by time to get the displacement okay so how about if we eliminate time well that's a bit uh, difficult to do because of the t squared but we can still do it okay time is equals to v take away u divided by a okay and likewise t squared i'll just write it out now is equals to v squared take away 2 uv plus u squared divided by a squared okay i just write that so we can make a simple substitution now we just substitute this one inside here so u x is equals to u times by this one over here okay divided by a and then later we will plus half Okay, I'll be plus half a t squared. So the a times here will cancel off one here, right? So I'll put an a here, we'll cancel one off here. So basically we will get v squared take away 2 uv plus u squared divided by a. Okay? That is what we got. Okay, so now basically uh, doing the algebra, okay, I got a uv divided by a, I got a u squared divided by a plus uh, v squared take divided by 2a take away a uh, uv divided by a plus a u squared take away 2a okay then this one will cancel out with this okay likewise like the similar to the, the previous problem i got a uh, minus one but i'm gonna plus a half so i get a minus half right so x is equals to okay it'll be v squared take divided by 2a minus okay u squared take away 2a yeah that's correct and then after that we can just simply bring the 2a over so we got v squared take away u squared is equals to 2xa and we'll rewrite it in a more useful form v squared is u squared plus 2xa okay why is that useful because when a particle travels okay and we want to find the velocity after a certain displacement x okay given by v squared over here okay we can just simply find it out by putting the equation of u squared so we just need the initial velocity and the acceleration and displacement to find what's the final velocity at that certain point over there without the time element because we have just eliminated that okay so this would be our fourth equation of constant acceleration okay this one over here and last but not least we can just eliminate u from the equation do you want to eliminate u yep eliminating u so we will go u is equals to v take away a t we'll just sub this one inside here so x is equals to v take away a t t plus half a t squared okay and that would give us v t okay plus half minus one so we got minus half a t squared the displacement is equal to this over here and there we go our one equation here two equations here three equations here four equations here five equations here five equations to help us solve the problems involving motion under constant acceleration okay um hope that's easy enough to understand and we'll just move on quickly to more advanced topics okay thank you